One of the most important things you do as a soldier is keep your M40 protective mask in first-class condition and ready for use at any time. The way you do that is by performing regular preventive maintenance checks and services, or PMCS. Start your PMCS by unscrewing the filter canister from the face piece. In a chemical and biological, or CB, attack, the canister is your only source of uncontaminated air. It is a definite lifesaver. However, it also has to be handled carefully because the carbon material inside is cancer-causing if inhaled or swallowed. So first, see that it's not crushed. Make sure it hasn't been immersed in water. Check that there are no splits or cuts or damaged threads on the connector. Shake it, it shouldn't rattle. Then, inspect it for clogging foreign matter. If any of these things are wrong, do not throw the damaged or unusable canister away. Turn it in to your supervisor for proper disposal in accordance with your unit SOP. That goes double for the special purpose version of the M40 mask. If you've been issued one of these, check both canisters in the same manner. Now reinstall the canister. Put on the mask and breathe through it. If there's no excessive resistance, the mask will function when you need it. Remove the mask and check your face for charcoal dust. That's another sign that the canister needs replacing. But again, never throw a canister away. Always turn it in for a new one. The same goes if your unit commander, or SB3-30-2, says the canister filter should be replaced, or every 30 days after initiation to toxic chemical operations. Continuing PMCS, once you've again removed the canister, take off both eye outserts. Check that the eye lenses underneath aren't cracked, cut, scratched, or discolored. Make sure the eye rings aren't bent or corroded. Examine both outsert lenses for cracks, chips, or discoloration. On either pair of lenses, damage like that could refract light or otherwise impair your vision. Also check the rubber rings for tears, looseness, brittle spots, softness or stickiness, and cracked rims. Now remove the hood from the face piece. Examine the hood for cuts, holes, or tears. Keep it away from flame or exposed light bulbs during your inspection. If there are more than two pinholes in any panel, it's no good. The fabric shouldn't be sticky or gummy, and its coating shouldn't be peeling or worn. Make sure the straps, cord, and hardware are all there and in good condition. The zipper can't be torn or broken and has to work properly. When you inspect the hook and pile fasteners, see that they're stitched on tight and free of dirt. If you have the two-layer special purpose hood, be doubly thorough in making the same checks. The face piece is mainly for protection, although it should also be comfortable. Inspect the inside surfaces for dirt, mud, and greasy or oily substances. These could cause discomfort, but more important, they could cause a leak.
Check for holes, tears, and splits. Examine the edges to make sure there aren't any soft or sticky spots that might compromise the seal. Silicone rubber around the eye lenses should hold them firmly. Also make sure the rubber isn't pulling away from any of the face piece housings. Continuing your PMCS, check your head harness for loss of elasticity and for dirt. There shouldn't be any mildew or fraying either. The straps shouldn't be cut, torn, or have missing parts. Metal end clips on the straps usually prevent this and also make it easier to thread them through the buckles. Those happen to be the next items for inspection. Examine them for bends, cracks, or corrosion. Make sure none of the buckles are missing or broken. Tug on the straps to make sure the buckles are secure. And that the finish isn't chipped or scratched, exposing bare metal. Unfasten the drink tube from its holder, then grasp the bottom tab on the cover and lift it up. You want to see that the outlet valve disc isn't missing or curled at the edges. Rotate it with your finger to make sure it doesn't stick. The disc shouldn't be nicked, torn, or ripped. And if it's dirty or wet, wipe it with clean cheesecloth. Don't use any kind of paper because even a small particle of paper could prevent the valve from keeping contaminated air out of your mask. Check the outlet valve seat for dirt and wipe it off too if necessary. Then smooth out the disc so it lies flat on the valve seat. Put the cover back on and wipe off any dirt or moisture. Next, examine the external drinking tube for cracks, cuts, and a solid connection. If you're satisfied with that, turn the mask over to see that the internal drink tube is in place. Check it for cracks or cuts. Also make sure it's properly aligned. Put on the mask and blow through the tube. There should be some resistance. Suck in. The resistance should still be there. This proves the system isn't leaking. Now connect the tube to your M1 canteen cap. Blow air through the system again. You should no longer feel resistance because the M1 canteen cap has pushed open a safety valve in the quick disconnect coupling. After you disconnect the canteen cap, remove the mask. Turn it over and bend back the soft nose cup assembly so you can see the hard plastic airflow deflector. Check that both of its small flanges are securely fastened through holes in flexible protrusions on the face piece. The holes themselves mustn't be cut or torn. Flip the mask over again. Opposite the airflow deflector is the inlet valve. If it's missing or damaged, the face piece will leak. Make sure the valve body and the disc inside are mounted on the airflow deflector post. Blow on the valve. The thin disc should curve inward and not be stuck to the valve body. Look closely at the disc. It should be free of cuts, holes, or tears. And if it's dirty, clean it with cheesecloth. Next, reach inside the mask and pull gently on the nose cup. It's held in place at the bottom by the front voice meter housing and should feel secure. The upper portion of the nose cup has two valve seats, one on either side. Check the whole assembly for dirt, cracks, cuts, or holes. Both disc valves should rotate freely and not be curled or torn. Also, make sure they're properly seated. The outside portion of the front voice meter is held in place by a retaining ring. Try to tighten it. Then check for corrosion, cracks, or nicks. Do the same with the retaining ring on the side voice meter. The special purpose mask doesn't have one because of its dual canisters. Now look at the voice meters to make sure there aren't any dents, cracks, or punctures. There should be four little beads in the center of each one. 
that's how you know it's facing in the right direction and not installed backwards. DS2 can damage voice emitters. If yours have come in contact with DS2 or are simply dirty, wash them off with clean water. The carrier only needs to be checked and serviced after a mission or as part of your weekly field routine. First, empty it, and remember that if an item isn't authorized in your TM, it doesn't belong in the carrier. Size and model number may be marked on the outside. No other markings of any kind are authorized. Under field conditions, your mask carrier can really take a beating. Sand or dirt may get inside. Solvent could be spilled on it if you've been working on equipment. Hard use might break stitches tear straps, or start to rip seams. And damp weather can cause mildew. Examine the carrier very thoroughly for anything, including sharp edges, that might damage the mask inside. Hook and pile fasteners on the carrier flap can really trap dirt. You may want to clean them with a stiff bristle brush. and make sure they're secure. The waterproof bag normally stored in the carrier should be free of cracks, tears, and holes. If it's brittle, it also needs replacing. The same goes for the rubber bands used to fasten it when your mask needs to be kept dry in the field. Make sure they're unbroken and not sticky. One last item. If you've been issued prescription optical inserts, take time to reassure yourself that they're not broken and are firmly connected in the face piece. Before reassembling your mask, check your TM for cleaning procedures. When you're thoroughly cleaning the face piece after a mission or during routine combat maintenance, your unit supply will provide the necessary items, a pail and brush, soap, polish, alcohol, and cheesecloth. You don't want to get the canister wet, so remove it and set it aside, along with the outserts and hood. The outlet valve cover also needs to come off. Pull the drink tube coupling out first. Then grasp the tab at the bottom of the cover and lift it up. Pull the sides away from the groove around the valve until the cover comes loose and disconnect it from the flanges on top. Now you're ready to clean. If there are any greasy or oily substances on your face piece, put some alcohol on a piece of cheesecloth and wipe them off. Then fill your pail with warm soapy water and clean everything inside and out. You can use either cheesecloth wrung out almost dry or the soft brush. Also, be sure to rinse by wiping with a clean cheesecloth that has been dipped in warm, clean water. When you've finished with the face piece, move on to the hood. And finally, clean both outserts. If you have more cheesecloth, use it to dry the mask components, or simply let them air dry. The main thing is, all parts of the mask have to be completely dry before you reassemble and stow it. When you're finished, make sure you reinstall all component parts properly. When you've finished PMCS on the mask, reinstall the hood and prepare the complete assembly for stowing in its carrier. Now your M40 protective mask is checked, serviced, and ready for action if you need it. The TM contains even more helpful information than you've seen in this video or in the one on components and use. That's why you have your own copy. When you consider how important it is that your mask be in perfect working order, knowing your way around the TM for PMCS seems like an outstanding idea.